qualitative characteristic number four, Q4, is verifiability. What's that about? Well, that one is all about proof. Got to have proof when we do things in business. So what does that mean? It means the accounting information presented must be verifiable, or what we say is have evidence to support it. So it actually represents what it claims to represent. How do we do this? Well, we should have a source document. We'll learn these throughout the year, the different types, but basically what we're saying is evidence. All your transactions should have evidence to verify them. We should also avoid using any estimates, guesses, and subjectivity in business. And lastly, if we do have to do these things, we should have our information audited by an independent party. How does this work? Well, let's take Apple. These are real figures for Apple. The revenues in 2021 were 365.8 billion, Expenses were 271.1 billion and the net profit was 94.7 billion. I mean, that's just what they told us. So I guess what verifiability is about is prove it. Okay, Apple should be able to prove every single one of these figures. How do they do that? Well, source documents, and this is just one, right? Someone got a receipt for an Apple Arcade monthly subscription for $5.34. All right, that's called a source document. And when you think about it, these numbers here, as big as they are, are just made up of source documents. There will be a source document for all those numbers. Why? Because that verifies that each of these numbers occurred, the date that they occurred, and also their amount. So that's verifiable now. What else do we know? Well, source documents. What are the types of source documents? We'll get through those as we go through the course. But for now, we'll just say, look, some of the ones we're going to expect to see are called receipts, sales invoices, purchase invoices. What are these? How are they different? We'll get to that later. We'll have checks, check butts, FPOS receipts, ATM receipts, BPAY receipts, and bank statements. There'll be others too. But fundamentally, they're, they're our evidence in business. That's how we prove things. All these source documents here. Uh, where possible, we should avoid using estimates, guesses, and subjectivity in reports. So here's a reporting period. Let's say it's a year. That's 2021 right there. It began, it ended. When it ended, we prepared an income statement, a cash flow statement, and a balance sheet, okay? Here's what we don't do. In these three things here, we do not want to have estimates for revenues and expenses, cash inflows, cash outflows, assets, liabilities. That, that's not business, that's not accounting. No estimates here. What we should have is we should report the exact figures from the accounting system, and each of those figures has a bunch of source documents as evidence. However, what if we do need an estimate, and we'll get to that when we look at some examples. Sometimes, you know, accounting wouldn't be very flexible if it didn't have estimates. Estimates help us plan for the future. Sometimes estimates are required or a guess. So what we do, so taking an example, the value of property. Yeah, value of our property is expected to increase this year by 100,000. Property is just always, you know, a bit of a guess, a bit of an estimate, but it is a relevant estimate. We need it. So what happens when we do need to estimate or guess? Does verifiability say you can never have estimates or guesses? It that sort of does, but it's a bit flexible because it's got this third bit. It says you can have some estimates and guesses so long as the information can be audited by an independent party. How does that work? Well, we'll look at that in the next video when we look at some examples.